Well, we are getting close to that time of year where uh, fish stocking will start taking place right across the province. And uh, a guy that gets really busy at this time of year is uh, Craig Copeland. He is the fish culture manager based up in Cold Lake. Uh, Craig, first of all, thanks so much for spending a little bit of time with us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's great to talk about fishing. Absolutely. And um, of course, uh, earlier in the, or late last year, early this year, however you want to look at it, the minister made uh, announcements that uh, we were going to see an increase in terms of uh, I guess, the number of fish being stocked, but also the different species of fish being stocked. Uh, walk us through a little bit. Give us an overview of what the anglers can expect this year. You know, the trout program will be pretty much the same as uh, normal. Uh, you know, we'll be stocking well over 240 water bodies this uh, spring and fall. But the new fish that will be on the horizon will be uh, the walleye. And last year we were hoping to get into the spawn camp, but because of COVID, just couldn't uh, couldn't do that. And then this year the staff are going to gear up and uh, go in. There are a lot of protocols in place, of course, with COVID. Uh, but we're going to do a small walleye spawn camp at Lex and Ann. And uh, it's going to be exciting. You know, the walleye room has been uh, at the Coal Lake Fish Hatchery. is ready to go. And it's going to be exciting to raise the eggs again and, and hatch out the baby fry. In terms of numbers, can you give us any sense of what we're looking at in terms of a, a, a walleye number for this coming season? Yeah, you know, back in the 80s and 90s when we did the walleye program, uh, you know, we we had a huge uh, laundry list of lakes to get stocked and, and a very aggressive uh, stocking rate per hectare. Uh, what we're looking at now is a much more reduced number of fry per hectare in the water bodies. Uh, about 10 water bodies have been selected uh, uh, to, for the walleye program. It's up, it's up on uh, on the web, uh, which lakes are going to get stocked. One of them being, of course, Sylvan Lake, which is very popular. Um, but uh, we'll be putting in less fry per hectare. And the idea on the program is to uh, is not make sure the walleye eat all the groceries in, in the water body. They're ferocious uh, eaters uh, in the wild. And so a much more reduced stocking will mean about probably about five to six million eggs we'll take. We'll see. Uh, we're also going to try to triploid the walleye egg. Uh, it's a request that's been coming in from the biologist is to triploid the walleye. And so we're going to do a small batch of eggs and, and see how that goes and test uh, how well we're doing on that. So uh, what does that mean? What what is that? What does that technical term mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if you look at the stocking rates, uh, probably 70 percent, 75 percent of the trout we stock in Alberta are all triploid. Basically, they can't reproduce. And so they're 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 duds. And so uh, you put the egg under pressure, a fancy machine that you buy. Uh, and so we do this all the time with our trout eggs. And so we're going to try for the first time ever. Uh, out at the spawn camp, uh, doing it with the wall eggs, and uh, our staff have been trained. They're going to be helping uh, the biologist and his team there, uh, Stephen Spencer, and and all the staff that are going to be involved in that spawn camp. And we're going to give it a go. And what we'll do is we'll raise the eggs separate, and we'll put them, we'll stock them out uh, in in certain water bodies that the biologist uh, don't want the walleye to so. Uh, interact with the native walleye population in that water body. So it's a tool uh, that they want to try. And if it's successful, i.e. the, you know, triploiding is, you know, anywhere from 95 to 100% successful, then then we can look at other water bodies to collect the walleye eggs from in the future that we're not too worried about genetics. So we don't want the genetics of one strain to mix with the a current strain that might be in that water body, right? And so this will be, they're doing it in other places in the United States, and it'll be first time in Alberta that we've ever tried to triple A dual eggs. What is the, um, I guess, danger, if I could, maybe that's an over 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 dramatic term to use but uh if you did get a, a mixture of the dna from 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 a planted walleye to a to a, i guess quote unquote a native species to that water body what are the what are the threats that could happen there i think uh, the danger is sort of uh you know you're mixing two pools of genetics and so if your 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 management is to try to allow sustainable uh populations of walleye so that they can manage the fish, you know, the population themselves, the fish. So you're worried about the DNA crossing in and and, and maybe adapting uh, a future walleye that maybe not as 
that are adapted to that to that lake, right? So, so the biologists, I mean, everything is getting so advanced in today's technology. Everybody's really worried about genetics. And back in the 80s and 90s, it really wasn't the focus uh, when we first started the wildlife program out, to be honest with you, was to, to sort of create fisheries uh, throughout the province. Uh, we really weren't focused on genetics back then. I mean, I, I was around the program back then. Now the biologists are very focused. Uh, they want to make sure that the, the, the strain that we select of walleye is going to be best suited for those water bodies. So, for example, the Bistu Lake walleye, which is way up in the northwest part of the province, we collect walleye eggs from there all the time. They're worried about the genetics of that uh, walleye adapting to lakes in Alberta, uh, in, you know, in the lakes that may have already existing walleye population that's been there for a long time, and then bringing in a bis juice strain and, and interacting with those ones. But if the fish is triploided, then we have no issues. Um, the fish will go swimming around. And, and the idea is to tr try to create these self uh you know, putting the fish and then let the fishermen harvest these walleye. That's kind of the focus of the, 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 of the program, of the stocking program, is to try to create these uh, put, grow, and take fisheries. People are just going to have to have some patience. It'll probably take three to five years for the walleye to, to, to get onto the, to be, you know, anywhere from 30 to 50 centimeters, depending on the food source in the lake. And so this program is, is we're putting the foot in the water, stock a, a bunch of lakes this spring, and then uh, fishermen are just going to have to have some patience and wait for the program to, uh, you know, three, four years. So this is going to allow, again, the so-called um, natural stock that's already in the lake to continue to um, to grow in terms of population numbers. Um, and then in terms of an angler coming in, they're not going to know the difference whether this is a, a stock walleye or not. So I guess how do we kind of thread that needle, if, if you will, Craig? Yeah, we can't put little numbers on the fish saying that this originated from a hatchery, but uh, no, it, it's going to just allow more fish to be harvested, right? And so um, the idea is to increase the population and some of the, the lakes that the biologists will be selecting. Uh, may not have a walleye population in there. So they, they think, well, the, the water conditions are, are suitable for walleye. Let's stock them in and try to create these fisheries. And that's really going back to, you know, the minister's objective. Uh, the minister was really uh, want, focusing the staff on trying to create as many fishing opportunities in Alberta as we can. And so, uh, you know, he really set that goalpost out there and the staff are doing a good job as best we can to try to create more fisheries, look at other species, uh, you know, turning this story away from walleye, we are going to be stocking for the first time an in-house cutthroat trout program that uh, we collected the eggs from the wild and uh, have our own in-house uh, cutthroat trout fish uh, adults that'll be uh, creating the eggs and we'll be starting to stock a cutthroat trout now on a regular basis. It's just more another species of fish for the biologists to select in the lakes in Alberta. And um, I, I thought I had heard at one point that, that, that we might start looking at grayling. Is there any um, update on that? Yeah, we want to get into the grayling program. One of the, you know, the difficulties is to select where the, um, the stock should come from. So the biologists are still looking out there in Alberta uh, where we want to go to collect the, the, the right grayling uh, population. So because you want to sort of uh, create a recreational uh, strain of grayling. So some of the ponds that we stock, say right now for trout, they probably could easily take in some grayling also. So they, the biologists are, are uh, looking at the right uh, source of the eggs. And then once... Um, we have space, uh, that's the idea with the new Raven Brew Trout Station, when it gets constructed, is to allow uh, a dedicated space in the in the facility so that we can raise uh, adult grayling uh, and to take the eggs from and raise the fish up to whatever size we want to stock them. It, it, you know, we, we have raised uh, grayling in the past um, up to, say, 20 centimeters, so we know our staff know that they can they can do that. You mentioned the brood stations, uh, the uh, of course the uh, uh, the Raven, um, and then the one down on the Crow's Nest. Um, they were going to go through some major renovations and upgrades. Can you give us a, a a bit of a snapshot on where that work is going? Yeah, you know the government has uh, just been investing, uh, you know, significant dollars in these the four fish hatcheries that we have, and 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 it's great. Um, you know, we haven't seen a brand new fish hatchery since the early '80s at uh, the Coal Lake Hatchery, but exciting times. Basically, the the, the Calgary Hatchery, Sam Livingston, and the Allison Creek Hatchery have just gone under um, a major reno 
where their water treatment facility was replaced with new technology. And so those hatcheries rely on like 95% reuse water. So the water just continuously cycles through the hatchery. And so those, those hatcheries are back up and running and uh, with new technology. And it's exciting uh, to work out the bugs on, on all that. And then um, the Coal Lake Hatchery is designated to have a, a brand new recycle in its facility because it's right now brings in 300 liters per second of fresh water from the lake it goes through the it gets heated up uh goes through the fish and then goes back to cold lake so now we're going to we're going to capture all that heat now and put in a reuse system where we'll recycle some of the water probably about 75 percent of the water will be recycled in cold lake and that'll increase the flow ability for the hatchery and, and allow a better for the fish, uh, they'll, they'll be uh, in much better conditions. The turnover inside the, uh, the rearing units will, will change over much more faster. And then the brand new Raven station, and for us, um, that had been around for a while. It's pretty exciting to build a brand new hatchery from scratch. And we're just going through uh, the final designs on that Raven and uh, and hopefully get up and do some construction uh, by this before winter here coming up. Uh, but we want to take our time and make sure that we build the Raven uh, the way we want to, because, you know, you're, you're building a building that's going to be with us for 50 years. So I guess to kind of recap what we can expect to see then, we're going to see some walleye. We're going to see tiger trout. We're going to see rainbow trout. We're going to see the potential of cutthroat. Um, when you add it all up, uh, Craig, uh, can you give us a sort of a, a, a top number of just how many fish you're going to be putting into play this coming season? You know, easily a 2.2 to 2.4 million trout will be stocked. And, and, you know, the people say, well, what does that mean? But on, on a weight wise, you know, you're talking probably well north of about 110,000 kilos of fish weight uh, inside our facilities. Our facilities, our fish hatcheries are, are 100% to the max already. And so uh, the new Raven will allow us now to expand our fish stocking abilities that much further. We'll be able to probably raise about 13,000 kilos of new fish. So that'll be exciting. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, the Tiger Trout program has been really a big hit. Uh, uh, we've stocked about 53,000 or so, 55,000 tigers into almost close to 30 lakes now. Uh, we've come up quite quickly. And, and since 2015, uh, we were at, five, I think, three lakes in two, 215. And now we're up to 30. So that's great throughout the province. Uh, so rainbows, brown, brown trout, brook trout, cutthroat trout, um, and the tigers, a really exciting program. And then future, you know, maybe down the road, uh, grailing. And of course, the walleye, first time in, in a long time that we're going to be stocking walleye. Well, I know there's an awful lot of anglers, including myself, that are looking forward to getting out to some of these ponds, especially about those, uh, I, I'm kind of hooked on the tigers myself i just love going after those guys uh craig uh, thank you so much we really appreciate the work that you and all the other uh, folks at the various fish hatcheries across alberta are doing and and uh, giving us some great opportunities to get out and enjoy this pastime that uh, i think a lot of us really enjoy so thanks again for your work thank you uh, my staff deserve all the credit 